Tony, he's Mike, and today we're going to find out why 1986 was better than 1985, and we're going to find out how you get a job with Stargrove. Stargrove! With 1986's Never Too Young to Die. Stargrove. Glad Stargrove. The only one standing between life and death in a brave new world. Stargrove. Never too young to die. Tell us who's in it, Mike. <laughs> we have John Stamos, Uncle Jesse as Lance Stargrove, <laughs> Vanity as is it De Dea Dana Deja Dersha. Doesn't matter. It's Vanity. G Simmons as Velvet. Von Ragnar. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, and and uh, really quickly, George Lazenby as Drew. Stargrove! And uh, Robert England as Riley. And, I only mention them because it's Robert England. Yeah, and, and, uh, and others, and yeah. others. Um, uh, <laughs> this, this movie, <laughs> this movie is, is exactly why you should love trash cinema. <laughs> yes, yes, 100% agree. <laughs> um, I'm going to say this. For, for all the effort that was put into this film, I want to say this. Gene Simmons, who, who was in Runaway with Tom Selleck mm -hmm. and a couple other movies, he was trying to like, like segue away from music and, and get into acting. Man, oh, oh. I, I don't know if he loved this character or what, but he, I think he, did. He, 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 he turned it up like to 15 on this one. It takes a man like me to be a woman like me. Yeah! He cranked it up so high he broke the system. <laughs> it, it, and and I, I have nothing but mad respect for him for this one because it took me a second and I was like, that is Gene Simmons. That's Kiss Gene Simmons. He's kind of, what the f***? <laughs> Do you believe what you see? Yeah! Walk us through the plot, then we've got to dig into this shit. <laughs> so, uh, Drew Star Stargrove, uh, who's George Lazenby, who, uh, if you didn't know, was a, uh, a James Bond for one movie, uh, does a James Bond role here. He's trying to uh, infiltrate Ragnar's compound to steal something so Ragnar can't uh, execute his plan of poison the uh, city water. Yes. Poison the water supply. I'm going to poison the water supply for gold, for ransom, for jewels, for money. <laughs> to, to kill everybody and kind of hold everybody hostage. Uh, while he's doing that, uh, he gets betrayed by a member of his own group. Uh, he tries to shoot his way out. He gets caught by uh, Ragnar. Ragnar kills him. I've lost too much blood for your games. Sweetheart, you're about to lose a lot more. <laughs> John Stamos, who's uh, Lance in this one, uh, finds out from the government that his dad is dead. He's not buying their BS excuse. He lost control of the car. He did a freeway bridge. Bullshit. I beg your pardon, Lance. My father didn't work for any oil company, all right? Uh, goes to do some investigating of his own. He teams up with Vanity, and from there, shenanigans ensue. <laughs> Scumbag, it's Star Bros. That makes about as much sense as this movie does. <laughs> Which makes zero sense. <laughs> okay, so let me see if I understand this correctly. If I've got a floppy disk and Robert England uh -huh. with the right data, I can somehow dump radiation into the water supply and hold the U.S. government hostage for billions of dollars, but Velvet is already wealthy. Riley, what is that? A goldfish. A plain, ordinary goldfish that's drinking that stuff. All we need now is that disc, and we're there. She can afford that many minions and that many firearms. Really, like, what, what? <laughs> I would love to know the motivation behind the character. <laughs> I'm gonna poison the water supply for gold, for ransom, for jewels, for money. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very cartoony. 
Yes, yes, that yes. sums it up perfectly. It is, it is very comic book villain. Yeah. It is like I'm evil. That's why I must do evil things because <laughs> evil is its own reward. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, John Stamos kind of, he starts off enthusiastic in this, and then he's like, like somewhere in the midway point of this film, he starts kind of phoning it in. I yes. think he realized, yes. like, this movie isn't going to be very good. Yeah. <laughs> got to find this disc. You mean the one that your father sent? You got it? Sure. Remember? All for one, one for all. Cliff, where is it? It's right here in the box. <laughs> it is not. Yeah. But, and but actually, even towards the end, he kind of camps it up a little bit, like at the end with the fights and stuff like that. Finally starts to have yes. fun with it. Yes. Finally. Ragnar, you don't happen to have a spare key on you, do you? Ooh, like father, like son. I love it. Gene Simmons, however, is extraordinary throughout. There is there is not a scene. There is not a line delivered. There is not a, a, a moment on camera where he's not rolling his eyeballs back into his head and, and using the Gene Simmons trademark copyright patented tongue technique. Trade a wet kiss for this? Another time, thanks. <laughs> you know, you say that, but he only sticks out his tongue like maybe a couple of times this whole movie. And most of the time is when he's kissing somebody. <laughs> with, with, like with, John with, Stamos. Right. <laughs> exactly. He but, commits. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so give him props for that. But yeah, the Gene Simmons chews up the scenery like nobody's business, <sighs> benches and purges, and goes back for seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't explain it any better now. Okay, this, this uh, I have great notes. <laughs> this movie is fascinating. First off, it's the worst soundtrack I've ever heard in my life. There's, there is not a catchy song. There is an earworm song that you'll never get out of your head once you hear it. Oh, wait, last time was great. What was that? Okay. Tom? But it sucks. <laughs> and and they like started. John Stamos' character is a gymnast who's got mm -hmm. his big like gymnasium thing going on at the beginning. He's waiting for his dad to show up for the meet and he botches it because apparently he uses the force and his he realizes his dad is dead. <laughs> I felt the disturbance he, in the star he, he, he falls up. He falls up the, the rails on that one. Uh, it's it's no time. All right, so um his roommate, Cliff, is Peter Kwong. And if you don't know who Peter Kwong is, he was one of the three storms from Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> and, and he's kind of like M in, in this John's, James Bondian universe, yes. uh, if you will. Um, but John Stamos had actually been on General Hospital and he left and this was his first feature film and he thought this was his ticket to superstardom. <laughs> he now refers to this film as a piece of shit <laughs> in an interview that was not done too terribly long Rightly ago. Rightly so. <laughs> Rightly so. But, but yeah, then he wound up going back to TV and became Uncle Jesse on Full House. But this was written by Stephen Paul. <laughs> Just to analyze where the garbage potential of this film came okay. from. Stephen Paul has acted in 20 movies. You've never heard of any. <laughs> <laughs> but where he did find his fame, where he has actually like left his imprint on Hollywood cinema is, is he's responsible for Baby Geniuses, the movie, and all of the follow-up movies, and then the Baby Geniuses TV show. <laughs> now, that will make this movie make so much more sense. <laughs> if you've ever had to sit through uh, any of the Baby Genius films. Now, the director, Gil Bettman, uh, he was an associate producer on the Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew's Mysteries. So he's got okay. a real love of the genre. But then he went on to do a lot of TV, and he directed BJ and the Bear, Knight oh, yeah. Rider, 
Fall Guy, and Auto Man. Well, that explains the schlocky, the way this film looks. It Ab looks very much t made for TV. Yeah, absolutely. But his, oh, wow. But yeah, his that makes, real wow, claim that makes so to much fame. Sense. His real claim to fame, what actually put him on the map and got him his directorial debut, was he directed music videos. Specifically, he did Chicago's Stay the Night music video. <laughs> and then he did Sammy Hagar's Give the Live, VOA, Nas Tequila, and others. So Sammy Hagar's a bit of a fan of this man. You know, I'm surprised ZZ Top wasn't in that, that list also. Um, it, anyways. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure that there's more. I'm sure I, I could have probably dug up more music videos, but those were the, the, the big ones for his. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this but some of those car chase scenes are like... Knight Rider esque, like like to the nines. Yeah, well, I, and it makes it makes complete sense now that you said it like that. So, well, I was gonna say he. Okay, so John Stamos gets on the motorcycle uh -huh. and he's chasing Vanity in the Corvette. Yeah, and then there's two guys that have a, a mace and an axe that ride up behind him. Now, rather than just riding up behind him and cracking him on the back of the head with a mace and an axe, which would get the job done. Yeah. <laughs> They decide that they need to tap him on the shoulder and go, Hi, we're here! <laughs> and, and then proceed to, you know, harass him while he's driving down the road mm -hmm. while Vanity pulls underneath the semi-truck so that she can later pop back out from behind the semi-truck and, and rescue Stargirl. Um, <laughs> it somehow works don't ask me how or why it's dumb as shit but it's, it's, there's it's so dumb it's funny and entertaining i mean that's the only way you could you can describe this movie it's just Yes. It, it, yeah. that, that, well, the other thing is, is that like you know they have the bar in the meatpacking district, and apparently at this bar it's okay to ride your motorcycle inside of it or your ATV. It's perfectly okay to just assault people there. And then Gene Simmons comes out dressed as a Vegas showgirl and mm -hmm. and does his amazing you know act. Do you believe what you see? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> um, and, and if you just turned that on, like like if you walked into the room and saw that scene, I don't know if you know that was Gene Simmons. I'm you're not wrong. You're not I wrong. I think it'd be hard pressed to realize that was Gene Simmons. So unless you really knew Kiss. I, I, I was gonna I don't say know. Well, this is close enough to them having just taken the makeup off. And huh? then, like, Gene Simmons, like, they, they were doing, like, <laughs> Feel My Heat, taking you out, burn the heavens off. They were doing all those music videos where huh? Gene Simmons was wearing, like, black denim and pink. <laughs> so, you, yeah. you might have known it, but, like, like... His wardrobe was so bad during those years that they would like flash to him, you know, pounding on his base and then immediately cut back to Paul <laughs> yeah, with his shirt, his vest on, with his massive mat of, of deep shag. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Gene was, was not right. the most handsome devil in Kiss. They took the no. makeup off and they were just kind of like, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, n none of them were handsome then by stretch of the imagination. Um, <laughs> no, they should have just kept that shit right on. <laughs> Paul Stanley could talk his way in. Yeah, I'm the lead singer of Kiss, and they'd be all like, I know who you are, Star Child. But then Gene Simmons took his makeup off, and they were all like, I, my friends are waiting for me outside. I, I gotta go. Sorry, Gene. But I'm Gene Simmons from Kiss. <laughs> Look, I do the tone thing. <laughs> I just That's ate. Great. <laughs> um, uh, but <laughs> so let's 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 talk about the love scene in this movie. The the, the passion and oh. love, where where Vanny had to seduce John Stamos, like do everything just to throw it out there. Hey, I'm hot. I'm sexy. I'm into you. I'm half naked already. In a bikini with yeah. a garden hose. With with no top on now. Um, John Stan was just eating his apple, drinking his juice box, and finally he's 
gives in to yeah, yeah. temptation. Well, he, he eats the first apple, and then he goes back for a second apple, yeah. and then he abandons that apple when, when he sees Vanity remove her top. That's that's the, the opening bid there. That's the one that gets him, him to collapse. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I don't buy that for a second, where you're going to just resist the temptations of vanity if you're a high school I think kid. I think part of it had to do with, I think, that he thought... He sees a, a bunch of pictures mm -hmm. of his dad with a bunch of different women, and he says something along the lines of, oh, you must have been one of her bimbos. And she's like, oh, it wasn't like that. We worked together. So I think that he was coming to terms with the fact that George Lazenby had piped Vanity before he got there. So he didn't want to be compared to his father in relativistic uh, I, I, I don't care if my dad right now <laughs> bang Vanity. I got the sloppy seconds. I'm, I'm taking it. <laughs> I'm just, just saying. <laughs> I'm not gonna be proud about it. <laughs> there gonna be a little, a little dose of shame. Look, sure, if, but you know, hey. If if Indiana Jones can bang Elsa after Henry Jones banged Elsa, I'm not seeing an issue here. It's not always shared. It's disgraceful. You're old enough to be her, her, her grandfather. Oh, I'm as human as the next man. I was the next man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe the summer romances happen. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, now, George Lazenby is famous because he was actually James Bond after Sean Connery left the role. Correct. And he, he had, was in, what, your... Uh, uh, His Majesty's, Majesty's Secret, Secret Service. Service. Okay. Which is a very, very underappreciated Bond film. It's really good, actually. I think... And I, there's actually a uh, episode of Archer based off of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say, I think uh, the biggest problem with George Lazenby, he kind of let the fact that he was the new James Bond go to his head, and he wasn't brought back for the next one because he was a bit of a schmuck about the whole thing. <laughs> so... I don't think... I don't think the movie did very well either. I, I was going to say, it's kind of... It's kind of it's not as serious as the Sean Connery one, so I don't think it was received as well as like Thunderball and, and all uh -huh. those. Um, but it also, it, it led to, to big issues with, with the rights of that one, because if I'm not mistaken, somebody bought the rights to Thunderball, and that's how we got Never Say Never Again with Sean Connery, which was a James Bond film, because they had the rights to do, you know, a continuation of that story, but then Roger yeah. Moore was also James Bond as well. There was a whole cluster f yeah. <laughs> about that yeah. one. Um, Anyways, but, getting back to... But yeah, getting back to this one, um, Tommy Lee Bradley. <laughs> well, you brought well, Jay, George uh, Lazenby to begin with, so what's the well, point? Well, no, I just, I just wanted to say that, like, he, sh he could have been... A Hollywood legend, oh, but his, yeah. it be, but because of the, his perception of, of how he was received after his stint as James Bond, it really kind of spoiled the rest of his career after yeah. that one. So he wound up doing a lot of schlocky movies like this, yeah. and it was always it's George Lazenby, you know, James Bond, but yeah. not really. So well, it's a shame though too, because I, because even even in this movie, he does perfectly good with what he's got. Actually, oh, as a yeah. matter of fact, he's a stand on this movie because. He knows what he's getting into. He knows yeah. what this is, and he plays yes. it perfectly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is one of the more interesting parts of this film. Oh, come on. This is stupid. You're right. Very stupid. And, you know, John Stamos, again, he starts off with, with such, like, you know, he's, he's so into the character, and he's delivering well. And then, like I said, like, midway through the film, you can literally see his attitude uh -huh. change because his performance really falls off. And then at the end, it's like, when they get to the scene on the dam... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think he finally realizes, like, okay, yeah, this is a piece of shit, and we're going to play with it. And we're going to have some fun with it. Right. Jordan's got a note. I have a really interesting note. Oh, please. The reason George Lazenby did not return to reprise his role as James Bond yeah. had nothing to do with the film Bombing. It had a box office of $22 million on a budget of seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's... And the film has an 81%. So okay. It scored well as well. Mm-hmm. The reason he didn't return was because his agent, Ronan, Ronan O'Rath, I don't know how to pronounce it, basically his agent convinced him not to return to the role, uh, stating that secret agent films would be archaic in the liberated 1970s. Oh, he God. He basically believed James Bond would be dead after the 70s. Let's so hear it for he the worst agent in Hollywood. No <laughs> I hope that guy died a horrible death. <laughs> 
Wow. Like Star Wars. No! <laughs> I'm sorry, like, like Velvet. No. <laughs> Um, um, the resolution of this film is complete bullshit. <laughs> Apparently, if you have a laptop that has the diskette, a uh -huh. 3.5 inch floppy, no less, and, and it is set to open up the dam and release the radiation into the groundwater, poisoning the water for all of Los Angeles and California. I believe that's the plot <laughs> that, that's going on. Yeah, yeah, If yeah. you just blow up the laptop, everything's fine. <laughs> Well, here's the other thing too. There, there was a, a a bomb that he had on top of the the dam. So, did, what what do you need the bomb for? Um, because if, if the water is already poisoned and you just gotta release the the water out of the dam, what? Or, I, or, or, or was the bomb the like a dirty bomb to make I to think, irradiate everything? I think I think it was supposed to be a dirty bomb, and they were gonna irradiate the water supply. I, <laughs> well, here's a, here's a stupid thing about that. Then is the bomb blows up. The bomb goes off. Yeah. So everything. I got nothing. Got anyway, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, this, the resolution of this film, like I said, is complete bullshit. <laughs> it makes no sense. But they were like, we've run out of money. We've run out of film. I guess we're done. And Gene Simmons was, you know, like, like leg dropped off the side of a dam. <laughs> and if you can watch that scene and not laugh your ass off. <laughs> you have no sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you get to see Gene, Gene Simmons' fake tits. And uh, uh, him, him make out with John Stamos. Yes, yes, there Cause, is. Because that. <laughs> John Stamos charmed the pants off of Gene Simmons there at the end. It's like, wait Literal, a second. Yes, your eyes are you're so beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> I just want to, uh, I just, uh, want to tell you how beautiful you are. I just, come here, give me a kiss, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so or Gene Simmons would say it. Come here, give me. A kiss! <laughs> <laughs> so much so that Gene Simmons didn't even try to finger him. <laughs> no, uh, no. Star Grove um, stuck that finger up his, you if, know, if Gene you're, Simmons' ass. If you're going to be a villain and you need a unique way to kill the people that you're going after, having a, a sharpened steel blade on your middle finger that you refer to as fingering somebody, that's, that's super villain shit right there. <laughs> That works by me. I mean, I would, I would completely borrow that. <laughs> the finger, 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 the finger. Please don't kill me. Next time, sweetheart, be careful who you choose as your lovers. <laughs> massive recommend for me. I had so much fun with this bad film. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I have, I, wait, uh, I, do have, I do have some other notes. Are you ready? All right, so this had a $3 million budget. Okay. Okay, so this is not, not, not big, but <laughs> its box office was $129,508. <laughs> it was in 75 theaters for one week. <laughs> Wow, nobody <laughs> came. No, nobody no, came. not even Gene Simmons. No. Damn. <laughs> um, Branscombe Richmond, Bobby Six Killer from Renegade, is one of Velvet's henchmen. He shows up, he gets fingered. <laughs> Um, um, here's the other question I have. Okay, so there's, there's like that, that like amphitheater looking thing that mm -hmm. they showed up in. Like, that must be, it's, it's a famous filming location because it shows up in Dragnet like, you know, a couple years after this. So apparently if you are in a gang that is hell bent on trying to take over the world and, and you kind of have a, a punk rock sort of look and uh -huh. vibe to you, apparently that's the place where everybody meets. Uh -huh. So put that one on your map if you ever decide to go that route with your life. I'm just saying. Um, Shout Factory put this out on Blu-ray. Absolutely. Buy the shit out of this. <laughs> Buy two copies. It's just in case. So. so you can loan one out to your buddy if he hasn't seen the movie before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it's it's an absolute recommend. I, I'm not going to buy it because I don't buy trash cinema, but it, it's absolutely worth the watch all day long. If it's, if it's, if, 
<laughs> I, I, it's on TV. Uh, I, actually, I, I I had to I had to hit the high seas. <laughs> Shh, we don't do that. Arr. <laughs> we, we don't do that. We don't no. promote that here on Tony and Mike Watch the World Burn. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I, I was gonna say it's available for rent in several places, and I know Shout Factory has has like 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 I said, it's available on for Blu-ray mm-hmm. uh, uh, from Shout Factory. So if if you love trash cinema and you like movies that make very little sense and 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 do not hold up to any kind of intense scrutiny, but damn, they're a lot of fun while you're watching them. Yeah. This is spectacular. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's worth watching just to see Gene Simmons chew up the scenery and, and, and to watch Vanity. I mean, really, you can watch it just, just for those two things. Is this the most 80s movie that we've watched for, for this, this, this block of films? I, I get, well, it just depends on what you mean by that. I mean, there are so many things that make 80s 80s. Um this is definitely like super fun schlock and it has a good good amount of tropes of 80s stuff so maybe i guess i don't know i don't know it's it's debatable this is my I, favorite of the four films we watched by a landslide i will say this as much as i enjoy and love weird science this was more fun to me this this week to watch um now that that's not always going to be the case, you know. This your your miles will vary from time to time and stuff like that. So. <laughs> if you can watch this movie and not have a good time, it's it's not the movie. It's you. Yeah. I is agree. it a good movie? No. But no. is it a fun movie? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's, that's it. That's all I got, I got man. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> we will catch you next time. It takes a man like me to be a woman like me. Yeah! Yeah!